basically my focus. We are discussing my script, Charlie Fried. Charlie Fried was born on March 18, 1938. He taught himself to play guitar in his early teenage years, but his real dream was to be a professional baseball player. In 1952, he was selected to play in the Negro American League as a pitcher. After two years with teams in Memphis and elsewhere, he entered the Army for a two-year stay. When he was done with baseball, he spent one year working in Nashville before receiving a recording contract. He was the first African-American singing star in Nashville. In 1965, commenced initial demo recording of Pride caught Chet Atkins' ear in, in, at RCA Records. He released his first song in January 1966. Pride's race was shielded from country radio through three single releases until the third, Just Between You and Me, climbed into the top, into the country top ten. On May 1st, 1993, Pride was invited to become a member of the Grammy Opry, becoming the, only the second African American inductee into the stage show. On July 1999, Pride received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Today, Charlie Pride is 84 years of age. He still tours to this day. Between 1967 and 1987, he got 52 top 10 country hits and sold tens of millions of records worldwide. In 1972, he won Best male country vocal performance Grammy Award. That's all we have today on Charlie Pride. Next up is Alex with the history on Little Rock Nine. Alex? Thanks, Michaela. On a more serious note, Little Rock Nine was a very important part in African American history. Little Rock Nine was a group of African American teenagers that came together to try and challenge racial segregation. In 1959, the group enrolled at Little Rock High School, which had been an all-white school up until that point. The students were told by the school board not to attend the first day, so they waited until the second day of school. The group included Melba Patillo, Ernest Green, Elizabeth Eckford, Minnie Jean Brown, Terrence Roberts, Carlotta Walls, Jefferson Thompson, Gloria Ray, and Thelma Mothershed. Although the Supreme Court deemed segregation unconstitutional, the Arkansas governor refused to let the students enter. With the protection from the federal troops, the nine African-American students were able to attend Central High School. They faced a white mob that not only verbally abused them, but also physically abused them too. Minnie Jean Brown fought back to the crowd and got expelled. This event is very powerful and shows just how African Americans used to be treated on the daily. They didn't care to think who they were hurting or how brutal they were being. Thank you for listening. This is Alex signing off on today's Black History Month event.